Hello creatives, I'm Ari and this is Shamelessly Creative. Today I thought I'd walk you through my process for getting ready for Inktober. So this is how I do it. There's a billion different ways to do this. So let's take a prompt word like last year I think our first word was ring. So first Let's turn this this way. So ring is the word. Now, what I do, I look at a prompt word for any list. This goes for any challenge. It's not just for Inktober, but of course, we're starting to work on our Inktober prompts. I'm just using last year's word ring. First, I brainstorm my word. And that's just everything that will come to mind. Then after, depending on how far I get with each word, then I may go let, look up the definition of the word. We start with that, then we go to definition. So go look on a, in a dictionary or an online dictionary is so much easier. And look at it used in a sentence. Look at the, the synonyms and antonyms because a prompt is by definition, is to start a process. So it's to prompt you to get started. If ring ends up making you think of, of something in the opposite direction, that's as valid as using ring for your prompt. So once I have my brain vomit here on what I think ring is or what images pop into my mind, then I get the definition and look and see if there's any synonyms or antonyms to that word that might strike something else. I look at that word in sentences. Most online dictionaries will offer a few sentences or uses for the word. After that, I circle any ideas that make sense to me and then I start doing some thumbnails. So let's just jump into it. I think of a bell. I think of a wedding ring. I feel like I should be using something darker. So last year I went with a bull nose ring. I could have a horse ring, gold ring, wrestling ring, oh, the sound ring. A mushroom ring, tree rings, link rings, spiral ring, telephone. This is definitely not everything that you can think of with rings, but it's a good start. So when you start really running out of ideas, just go as long as you can possibly go. Some words will not bring anything to mind. Some will bring a lot of things to mind. I feel like I'm forgetting the obvious things here. Oh, like earring, earring, lip ring. I can't think of any other noise. I guess there's, I don't know how you draw that, but you have ringing in the ears, ringing in the new year, towel ring. Oh, obviously. Key ring, most of us have one of those. Yeah, see, it's getting harder and harder each time. So you decide where you want to stop. So three ring circus, juggling rings, ring of fire. Okay, so you get the idea. I guess, you know, I don't want to waste a lot of time on that. So then, as I said, I'm going to just pretend that's not there. Define the word. So a circular, a circular band for holding connecting, hanging, pulling, packing, sealing. All right, this is the first definition. The second definition is a metal circulate worn on the finger, a circular line, line or object or figure. So for this one, they give us, which I didn't think of, smoke ring. So another example they gave is run rings 
around, run rings around him. So like beating a pawn and I could run rings around him. So then they also use a circular space such as a circus. But remember, did I have horse ring? Yes, horse ring was one of my first ones. A horse ring and then the structure sometimes is just called the ring. You know, like how in the circus they'll say, and in this ring we present the elephants. So another one I didn't think of for ring is bands around planet. So like Saturn, exclusive combination of persons, usually for selfish or corrupt purposes, like a gang food in the shape of a circle. It doesn't give examples. You could do a pile of onion rings. There's also the mathematical. I think that's algebra. I could be wrong on that one. I can't remember. It seems like there's a formula. Some of these things you may or may not want to draw out, but this again gives you a good start. Um, there's also a ringer. Could be a person. And as I said, there's the sound or ringing for the butler. Story rings true. You know, ringing up your friend. So also a ring bearer. Ring hollow. I'm guessing that just doing this part for you has kind of started the, pro the brain process of what you would do. And some of these things are things like a pile of onion rings I never would have thought of without going through the definition. So, you know, this is, this was what was, which is funny because I love onion rings, but this first part is what was the first things that came to mind. Looking up the definition on Merriam-Webster on another dictionary online. These are things that were there and now give me other ideas. And see, and then it start, it keeps sparking, you know, ring around the rosy. And so you could take this and go with the, the meaning of this nursery rhyme. You know, the original intent, why this was sung by children. And you could make kind of a creepy ink painting with it or drawing. Or you can make it playful and cute. That's how I start. And then I go through my list and I, I really like the ring around the rosy. I like the pile of onion rings. You know, like if I like clowns or maybe juggling, I might go with that one. I like ringing in the new year. And of course, I mean, this is the one I went with last year is bullnose ring, but I wanted to create characters. So for, for this, we'll just go with what I already used. So this is the one that I want, but maybe you don't know, maybe you have these five items circled and you're like, Oh, I don't know. Or maybe let's go with six because <laughs> key ring would be kind of fun because there's so many different key rings in the world that you could, you know, so like key ring would be great if you want to go for everyday items. Like, let's say you're just inking like everyday items for each word. That, that would be kind of a fun challenge or a smoke ring. Let's say I have these six and I don't know what to do. That's where thumbnails are going to come in. Even though it looks like I'm wasting paper because it drives me crazy to waste paper. I have like childhood trauma around wasting paper. So I will use the back for my morning practice with ink. What do we mean by a thumbnail? We hear that term thrown around all the time. Well, it's making, it can be a sketch. It can be a small study, such as a color study. So it literally, and this is how I've done it in the past, is I decide, because I don't like to spend a lot of time on this stage, but we'll kind of do a couple of each. So yeah, see, this was good. So a pile of onion rings, you know, I would need a plate. And then how would I want to 
could do that. What I want, you know, and because I'm just, it doesn't matter that it overlaps. How is that going to look to have different shapes on a plate? And then maybe we have steam or maybe, you know, how some, some places you go for onion rings, they kind of have this pole and then each ring is kind of stacked one on top of the other. So those are two options. Then either in this one, I could say I want to do some shading. You know, I want it to look a little realistic that there's some shadow under the onion rings. Maybe it seems so plain out here. I want to add some more elements like, hmm, maybe I want to make this on a table. Yeah, maybe that looks better. So that that's the, the simplest. I thought of, you know, doing a wedding ring. And so I can just, yeah, so no, hands are not my strong point. So maybe that's what I'm thinking of. You know, this is horrible. So. <laughs> but that's what these are supposed to be horrible. Like you go, oh, that's too simple. Well, maybe I want to do a scene from the ring, the movie. I haven't seen it. I don't like scary things. But maybe I'm thinking about mushroom ring, key ring. I've never drawn a key before. Um, but maybe you have a cute little bear attached to your key ring and that's really what you're wanting to draw. All right, and then what I did was I decided, because so I was gonna do people, little people. And then I thought, oh, let's put her in a little cow outfit. And then I was like, oh, wait, what if she had her little cow friend on top of her head? So this is, so then, so you have all these options. Well, I really like the onion ring idea. I really like this one. I actually really do like that one. That's kind of cute. Um, I think I would have fun with this one because I really like Faye. You know, this is probably something everybody's going to do. So I tend to stay away from the ones that are, are the popular choice. I'm not saying that all these other ones aren't, but I went with the little girl. Now, once you kind of ferret out the idea that you're interested in and you say, okay, I'm going with her. Now I kept it really simple and this is all I did. I did a character in the middle of the page. But now, almost a year later, what would I do differently? Well, I think she would be a little different because my characters have evolved a little bit and I wouldn't leave her standing in space. So even if I just left her there, one option for me would be to try out different, and I know I'd want a little shading under her dress, maybe down on her legs as well, but definitely more towards the top. I would try different positions for the little creature on her head, or maybe even, oh, like, well, maybe I want to try her cute little cow creature in her arms. I still want to keep that shading, maybe a little shading underneath him, darker, closer, and then a little shading. Or maybe I would decide, huh, I want to he had a little nose ring. Maybe she, I don't remember if she did, but let's say they're little nose ring buddies. So really, I'm just getting a feel for how I want to lay out the picture, basically the composition. And while my drawing last year was cute enough, I probably could make it a little bit better this year. Another way to do this is let's say you want to have Let's take the plate example again. And 
we'll just do our pile of onion rings. However they fit in here. So I don't need to be exact. I know I'm going to want some definition between those to make each individual ring kind of stand out, especially in the middle and at the bottom of the plate. I'm going to want to cast shadow from the plate. Maybe I want to do a wash of ink here and here to kind of highlight. And so some of these might be a little bit darker. Another way to show you would be kind of the same thing. Let's say you want this character having highlights from behind for some reason. So then I know, you know, this is going to be brighter on the back of the hair, the head, but maybe this is going to be darker. Face is going to be kind of in shadow. It's definitely going to be darker over here. But maybe there's a, a little shaft of light coming in. So these can be value studies. So figuring where you want your lights and darks in your picture. Like her, I want a little shadow. Where's my light coming from? It's coming from this way. So she's going to have a shadow on the back of her little dress here too. And under her, maybe it goes on the corner. He's going to have a little more shadow on her lap. She may have a little shadow back here by her hair. And under his neck, it might be a little darker. So this is what's going to help you the most going in with black and white. If you're staying with a black and white, but this helps with every art piece I've ever made. I used to think this was a waste of time, but look how cute this is compared. I mean, not that this wasn't cute, but this or this, I like these two better. And I think if I was to make it again, I'd probably go with this one because it's just cute. That's where these little thumbnails help. Now, what do we do? We've kind of figured out, okay, I want this one. I've kind of figured in my shading. I know I want it a little darker right directly under her. Now what? Now you either, depending on your pay, the quality of your paper, you can either draw out here. So if you draw on computer paper or your sketchbook, you can transfer your images over with a light box or a window onto the paper that you'll finally be using if it's a size that is similar. Yeah, I'm going to give her a little side ring because I know my light source is coming from here. Her face is going to be, you know, like this eye is going to be a little bit more in shadow. I'm just going to have a shadow under her nose. And if you're using watercolor paper, this is why I would do it here first. So, yeah, this isn't great. I have to figure out this other arm yet. So let's say this is my final drawing, which it's not. Um, this is not my favorite pen. If you're prepping for Inktober, this is where you would stop before starting to ink your pieces. You just have your pencil drawings for the first week or as many days as you want to, and then you can start inking on October 1st. I'm just inking this because I'm doing an example. And again, if this is your original work on copy paper or your sketchbook, you can always transfer it to a sketchbook or paper of your choice 
once you have a pencil drawing. But it does help pencil drawings to be seen with a light box or a window if you go over it with darker ink. And you also could use transfer paper as well. So even though I scribbled here for a shadow, I can always come back and change some of that. So if you made a lot of lines, you're now choosing exactly what lines See, I, I missed. And for me, I mean, this is just trying to hurry through this. Definitely isn't me trying to be perfect. My favorite and most satisfying part, just like watercolors, pulling the tape off a watercolor after you're done is just so satisfying. With inking, it's the same way. But this is where that ink practice comes in. Make sure you know how long your ink takes to dry. If it's two minutes, if it's 10 minutes, you don't wanna go in with your eraser before everything is dry. Otherwise you'll get smudging. So when you go back over everything and you remove all your lines, so this ink is pretty fast drying that I'm using. Not perfect erasing, but once your lines are gone, your pencil lines, you get just the black and white. You have a choice of just leaving it there or doing what I'm doing and going in with shading and with a brush, or you can use your pen and do shading that way. I'm more comfortable with a brush, so that's just the way I did it. But neither is better nor worse. Just whatever you prefer. And some of these inks dry really fast. So I've lobbed here and there's no fixing that. I was trying to get spread out. If you're used to working with watercolors and not really fast drying ink, you may want to work with the aqua inks instead. I'm wanting to get familiar with, with drawing inks. So I am going to practice a little bit, but as I said, this one dries so fast that I can't get a wash. So if I want a wash of color, I need to wet this area and then kind of come in. There, that makes more sense. So do, do any of you have your thumbnail drawings all set up? What's your process look like? See, it's already dry. And so that's another option is you could just have, have your line ink and then use a more water soluble ink. So this was the Sennelier acrylic. Maybe that's more the look I'm going for. I have these little food spoons that we just never use. So I've made them into mini palettes. And I can kind of get the gradients I'm wanting here. Now, I could go on with this for hours probably. So this is just my process, and this was just kind of supposed to be a quick overview and not really do an in-depth drawing. So, and I always have isopropyl alcohol near your ink, always close your ink. If you have anything, a little ceramic dish or palette that you can put your ink into, but always have isopropyl alcohol to rinse off any ink. So this is my process. I brainstorm whatever ideas come to mind when I first see a prompt word. I then go define it to look for ideas maybe that I hadn't thought of, like the pile of onion rings um, or Saturn rings. 
those were things I didn't think of. And Ring Around the Rosie, I think would be a fun one to do if you're into creepy cute. So we def so we find if there are synonyms or antonyms for the word, put those down too. Maybe the opposite idea or opposite meaning of the word will have more power for you and you'll choose to go in that direction. Otherwise, maybe it's one of the main ideas you came up with. So then we go back and you circle the things that give you the most excitement about drawing or the best images, and then try some thumbnails. So here we, would, we did the onion rings in different configurations. I really didn't like this once I started putting it down. I would definitely go with that one. You know, wedding ring, oh, that's like, everybody's thinking of that. So maybe you wanna try something different. Unless hands, like maybe you're doing a handing tober and then this might be the perfect answer. But it also could be someone holding a brass ring. So just try to be creative if you're going with something that's the simple answer. Be really creative in how you do it. Nose piercing. Oh, that's what I forgot for her. Is I kind of wanted her dress to have these. And same with him. To have little black splotches so he look more like a cow. Alright, so you get the idea. So her and her little cow both have nose rings and last year I just drew a little girl, a little chibi girl with a cow on her head and it was cute but this was also cute. Take your first idea, so this was my first idea last year was a little girl with a cow on her head. I could have had the cow in different positions on her head and I didn't even try to find better positions. I just thought of this one and that's what I draw. And that's completely okay. If you want to go with your very first idea, there's nothing wrong with this. This is just my process and how I then decide which one to go with. And out of the four, this one felt the best to me today. Tomorrow, it might be the girl standing. I work those details out and I tried to do a little shading on this, little shadows, etc. Even the acrylic ink dries out pretty quickly, but it's a little bit better. You can use the thumbnails for value studies, figuring out where you want your light areas and dark areas, knowing the light's coming from this direction, this person's face and body front would have to be either grays or even some blacks. And then you can decide how light the light shaft is coming down on their head. So these are just ways to plan out maybe where you're going to put your darkest darks and your lightest lights. And then there's everything in between. So I hope that helped. That's my process. What I also do is I try to do days one through seven here in the last parts of September. I, I don't do the inking on them. I just do the pencil drawing. And then each day, day one of Inktober, I work on day eight drawing and ink day one. And then day two, I ink day two and draw day nine. So, you have to decide if that feels like cheating for you to pre-plan your month. Some people don't want to even do this. They just want to go right to inking, wake up on day one and go right to inking. And they might do this on day one. They might say, okay, the word is ring. What comes to mind? And then they might do all these little drawings and then decide on one and draw. For me personally, with my schedule, this works better and knowing that I'm really excited to create this helps motivate me to keep going. Having this drawn out for day one, then I want to see how it's going to turn out once I, I put the ink on. And the satisfaction of getting rid of the pencil marks, I'm too new at this challenge to, to not do the pencil yet. 
I'm and but maybe that's one thing I'll try to attempt this year is do one of the Inktober days in just ink without having that kind of safety net of my pencil drawing. But again, I find that as satisfying to erase the pencils under the first ink lining as I do removing the tape in watercolor, like I said. This is just the way I approach it. There's a million ways to do it. And this just works for me to, even if I did get to the drawings, to just have these figured out for each word. Because sometimes you might go with your first idea, the onion rings, and be like, that's it, that's all I'm doing. Because let's say you didn't think of ringing in the new year or nose ring. And all of a sudden that's more inspiring to you than, than just doing a pile of onion rings. But maybe you're into food art and maybe that is really inspiring and it stays inspiring. It's just doing the thumbnails will set you up for success, in, at least in my mind. I Having those to fall back on and even even if you don't know which one you're going to go with, at least having the thumbnails before day one. So day one arrives, you haven't decided if you're going with a key ring or onion rings or nose ring. On that day, then you can go with whichever one inspires you the most. And maybe in the time, whenever you did your thumbnails between the time from that and your first day drawing, you get inspired by something else and you just go in a totally different direction. Some days I like, I kind of like, you know, this girl and the onion rings. And I might do two drawings in one day just because I'm kind of inspired by two of the things I did. But you can definitely leave one to do and just make a note that you want to create that at a different time. Anyway, I hope my showing you that process that I talked about in the Art Snacks Inktober box unboxing, this is my process. This is how I plan out my thumbnails for Inktober or February to give me a head start, get me excited about doing the challenge, give me ideas so that on the day, last year, I just did it on the day. I, I did some thumbnails ahead of time of things I thought of. So I just kind of did this process and this. I didn't do too many drawings ahead unless I was really inspired. And then I drew ahead. This year, I'm going to draw out the whole first week. And then on October 1st, start inking, inking all my drawings that I did at the end of September. The first week, start my drawings for the second week of October. And I'll just see how that goes. I'll let you know when we do the sketchbook tour at the end. I'll definitely share with you what I learned, what worked, what didn't, where, where I failed or succeeded. But this is just how I'm going into it this year is to have that first week of drawings done. Not, not inked, but the pencil drawings ready for ink because I believe that'll help me stay caught up. But feel free to do whatever process. It sometimes is trial and error and you just learn as you go what really works for you. I never really appreciate thumbnails, but as the year has progressed, just having even a simplistic idea of what you want to put on paper. If this is all you need to trigger this idea, then by all means do this. But this just gets think you thinking of composition and different ways to do whatever idea popped in your head. Maybe you wanna go with the original, but maybe if you tried different things, you'd find one that you liked better. And I definitely like this one better. Okay, so just as an example, this is my Inktober from last year. I also, usually the last couple weeks of September, prep my my sketchbook, this is the handbook sketchbook. I wrote all the words, a title page. Remember, usually the first pages in your book are stuck together. It's usually best not to, don't rip this because it'll mess up with the whole integrity of your book. It's supposed to be like that. So don't try to rip the glue here. 
just leave it, use it for a little title, another title page or your thoughts of what you want to do for Inktober, but just don't rip the glue. So these are my just simple ideas last year, just very simple thumbnail ideas. So nothing glamorous at all. And so here's my girl that we worked on today. Just a little cow sitting on her head for a ring. They both have a nose ring. I did a little different. She has, no, I didn't give him any horns, but that was last year. This is just a sample of this year. Totally different feel, very simple. Doesn't have to be difficult. Now I'd probably go back and put some shadow under here even if I was going to make a chibi character. No, as well, as sometimes your style evolves over time. So Inktober inspired me to, once I had to, to find characters, to find style, and Inktober can do that. It's a fun challenge. This is one of my favorite little ink books, at least last year. I ended up really enjoying it because it had the extra room in it to make several attempts at different words that I really enjoyed or was really inspired by. So if you're interested, that's the handbook sketchbook and it holds up pretty well to layering and and I still had several pages left over even. So it handled light washes like this was a very light wash of ink and it did well. It has a little pocket in back for anything. All right, so I hope that helps. I hope you have an excellent Inktober. If I do not get any more videos out before Inktober starts, but I have a few more ideas to share with you. Thanks for watching. I'm Ari and this is Shamelessly Creative. I appreciate you. I appreciate how our group is growing. We're now up to about 380 some creatives following. And so please spread the word about the channel. If you like watching it, I'm sure others you know may enjoy it as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a member of this community. Be well, be safe. Bye.